Welcome to the end of another highly questionable week. Sarah Spain in with us again. What do you like on the show today, Sarah? I'm really curious what Cleveland Browns players think about Kevin Durant going to the Warriors. Oh, June. Go away, June. <laughs> slow, slow, June. Dale, papi. Should the Spurs do what Kawhi wants and trade him? Should the Spurs trade Kawhi Leonard? It started leaking all over the internet today. Various different outlets getting the call that says Kawhi wants out. Setting the stage all of a sudden, even though he's under contract for a super team to be available to him the way it will be to LeBron James this summer because the power has shifted in that sport and the power has gone to the player, even the player under contract. Once Kawhi does this, he becomes an unhappy superstar. And you have to move him because look at what happened to the last Spurs season with an unhappy superstar. You can't just have him sitting there. you got to get rid of him. Yeah, it's almost impossible in any situation to say no. Force the guy to stick around and own up to his contract. If they're unhappy, it's not going to go well for you, but especially so when you just saw what happened last year. Not, not to say that we know for sure that he was healthy enough to play, but for him to miss an entire season and for people to disagree about whether or not he should have been out there has already set the stage for a guy who is not going to make concessions for a team he doesn't want to play for this opens up a total can of worms for the Spurs though because he's on a one-year deal right now that's all that's left so if he goes somewhere new how much are they gonna give up for a guy without a guarantee that he's gonna sign for a longer deal after that year here is one of the things that's in play if you're sitting here watching everything that LeBron James is doing and thinking to yourself how does LeBron James do the thing that tops Golden State this is the first thing that you need to topple here. When you want to go someplace that might have the space, if you're going LeBron, Kawhi, and then building around that, these guys might already be together on something. Kawhi, like you, I'm a man of few words. Look what I have behind me. Oh. Look at this. Look at this. Look at the view. Okay. Look at the oh, sky, blue you. sky. Look yeah. at the ocean, you know, nice water. Okay. Look at the sun, you know, a lot of piña coladas down here. You know, it's only 12 o'clock. Look at, look at everybody okay, enjoying the sun. 30. He doesn't know that the show's taped. We don't tell him. <laughs> That's right. Look at the swimming pool, you know. <laughs> Come on down here. In addition to that, no city tax and no state tax. Can't go wrong. Ambassador for the city of Miami. Great pitch. Does it make sense that the Packers' new GM does not have the power to fire Mike McCarthy? I love this story because not only does the new Packers GM not have that power, he was surprised to learn at the meeting that he did not have that power. Mike McCarthy is a golden calf in Green Bay because he has won a championship. I just think that it's an indictment of him that he has only won one championship. But the way the Packers run their franchise is pretty old-fashioned. They do appeal to loyalty in a way that's kind of uncomfortable. Common. You would see why their allegiance would be to Mike McCarthy instead of a new general manager. Yeah, lesson number one, I suppose, here is read your contract, all of it, because I'm guessing it's in there somewhere that he doesn't have the power to fire the coach. The most interesting part about this, of course, is that the Packers' new GM, whose name I'm not going to try to say on television for fear that I will say a very bad word, uh, that he's been with the franchise for quite a long time. So what he said was, from what I've seen being with the Packers for as long as I had, this is very surprising. Meaning that the people who came before me in this job absolutely had the power to fire the coach. What's different about me? And I do have to say I would be worried if I was him that the person in charge of keeping checks on the coach is not the GM who's going out to try to find the talent to pair with said coach. It's the owner. Doesn't seem like a good setup if you're an incoming GM. Kawhi. Did I mention to you the beautiful umbrellas here oh, down the no, beach, you know? We've got look at the too. surf, look I at the surf, you know? Look at the surf, look at that. This is beautiful to be here in Miami. I've been here all my life, you know? Enjoy yourself, come on down here, you know? Look at the spread, look at the spread, look at the, the spread. spread. I'm He's talking you. about a buffet, they've got That's a buffet right. Buffet too, buffet too, buffet too, you We're got it all. about umbrellas? <laughs> Should Miles Garrett really be talking trash to KD and the Warriors? Look at the disappointment on the face of Sarah Spain. Miles Garrett plays for the Cleveland Browns. They've won one football game in the last two years of allegedly professional football. And his opinion of <laughs> Kevin Durant is the same as a lot of people have, which is he ruined the league. You shouldn't do it that way. That's not the honorable and noble way to team build. You should be a competitor, not someone who just goes for the easy ride and then destroys everybody. And while his opinion is a common one, I would simply ask you, as you blame Kevin Durant. You ought to also blame the salary cap. You also ought to blame the owners because if there were no limits on the spending, Kawhi and LeBron James right now would be in a feeding frenzy with every city trying to pick them up. 
Yeah, at least Miles Garrett is coming from a place where he didn't take the easy road. Then again, he didn't have a choice to end up in Cleveland, and he's only played 10 professional games in his life, and he has no idea what it feels like to be in a league and repeatedly get close and never make it and decide that you want to make life a little easier on yourself and that you have a right to because you can totally join a team where everybody's making sacrifices for the team, which is what we as fans say we want, right? A bunch of guys that are in it for the team and just want to win. And when it's your team, that's all you want. But when it's not your team, you want to complain complain about how things aren't fair. Well, that's sour grapes. Every other team out there, just do your best to keep up with the Warriors. And Miles, play football. Wow. She gave him a talking to that included sour grapes. Grapes. I love grapes. I know. Poppy does love grapes. He yeah. does love grapes. That's right. They're sweet. Look yeah. at that. Delicious. <laughs> Ooh, yes. Where in the hell are we supposed to put Michael Porter Jr. on our drop board? This is the best guy who was coming out of high school and then last year. I mean, everyone's saying this is a top, top pick, and then he has a back injury. And now, as he goes through these workouts, he is not allowing these teams to run him through a full battery of physical tests before making an enormous investment. And it makes it hugely risky for the teams. But what it does is it opens up his possibilities of going to the team that he wants because he can set it up so that he's falling a little bit in the draft because he doesn't want to go to Sacramento or Phoenix. This is, again, another example of the player holding the power, even if the player's got L3 and L4 discs that are messed up. Yeah, the issue here is that this is a 19-year-old kid who hasn't played a single NBA game, has barely played any college games, and already has multiple injuries. It started out in high school, then one college game re-aggravates that back injury. Now he's got hip issues that are connected to that. This is a massive issue for a guy that's this young and that big. And if you've got a top pick in the draft, you absolutely can't take a chance, even though you look at that potential and you're drooling over what he could do. The likelihood of him actually doing that feels very risky. So if you've got a lower pick, if you're past 9 or 10, maybe you say this is as good of a shot as taking some kid that doesn't we don't know much about but only then because I'm staying away if I'm anywhere near the top of the draft. One of the scary things about this is the specifics of the injury. You know of foot injuries when it comes to the big players but when I tell you back a dude this young is having back problems you wonder if it's going to short circuit his entire athletic system. Hey Michael give me a call. I know a couple of places in Miami. I'll take oh. care of your back in no time. <laughs> do Believe that. me. Come on down here you know. Flying at night, nobody sees you, wear dark glasses, a big coat, and I, uh, just give me a call and I'm telling yeah. you something, you know, I'll take care of you, buddy. You'll be like a new person, believe me. Wow. Yeah, you'll, your back will be fixed and you'll have a huge butt. It's going to be hot. Well, so Oklahoma State's athletic director out of line with his criticism of Mike Gundy's recruiting. I mean, it wasn't really criticism. He just sort of said, I'd like to be a little bit better at recruiting. And any athletic director thinks that. Some of them say it. But have you seen this team play defense the last <laughs> 10 years? They obviously have to do something better about their recruiting on defense. He could have just said it that way and it would have been meaner. Yeah, usually when an athletic director or anyone is criticizing a guy's recruiting, it's about just that. The players that we're getting are not what I want. But in this case, it's how he's recruiting. And that's his sort of sly, subtle way of saying, maybe lose the mullet. Maybe lose all of the goofy clown stuff because the guys think it's funny, the players think it's fun, but there might be some people who are just on the edge of saying, I want to play for a serious football guy, a serious football team, and I don't know if I trust my play or my kids play to this mullet-haired, clowny kind of guy who might not be all that serious about his football. Here's how you do it. You go to a recruit house, you walk in, you drop some money on the floor, and when they say, hey, you know, you drop some money on the floor, you say, no, 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 that's, that's not my money, that's your money. I never had any money with me, you know? I came that's broke. Yeah, I don't see you. I saw it when I got here. <laughs> Coming up next on Highly Questionable. Yeah, this is difficult to do here. Uh, he also, uh, he looks like the owner uh, uh, of the Brooklyn Nets, uh, <laughs> Prokhorov. <laughs> Are we sure that's not Prokhorov? <laughs> um, he has a certain je ne sais. Oh, no, I know what it is. He's ginormous. My Sons TV show is brought to you by Pizza Hut. No one out pizzas the hat. Surrounding the developing news that Kawhi Leonard wants out of San Antonio. We'll get the why and which team is at the top of his list from Adrian Wojnarowski and Brian Windhorst. Time to play the game that wishes he could celebrate Father's Day with some grandchildren. Do your question. You give us topics and events. Don't laugh at and that. Don't so laugh mean. at that. It's so mean.
Do you question if my baby has been eating too much protein? Proteína is how you say it in Spanish. He's been eating a lot of protein. Mike Bibby, if you remember his career, he wasn't exactly flabby, but by NBA standards, he was a little bit soft physically. That is not the case anymore. <laughs> Look at this here, Instagram playing with oh. his son. And thank you for the helpful camera there, getting closer. <laughs> that looks like a lot of work. Are those still considered pecs, or is there another word for what that is, where the logo, the Jordan logo, is just being swallowed? Oh wow! Yeah, that's a big difference. He's got uh, he's got uh, cleavage in his bibbies, and he's got hair again. He's also got the newfound respect of Dwayne Wade here, who played with Bibby in 2010, and Dwayne Wade, who famously threw a shoe at Mike Bibby once, it looked a lot different than that. And he's like, "Hey, punk, catch!" In 2012, and then 2018. Uh, excuse me, you dropped your shoes, sir. Yeah, you're gonna be real real polite around that version of Bibby. He has been buying my urine for the last five years, oh, so right? all this good stuff, you know, I mean, he got a hell of a deal, you know what I mean? Well, that, those are the results. Okay. <laughs> who, is, who is exactly testing Mike Bibby at this point? What, what league is he playing for? Why does he need you? You don't need to test him. Just look at him. You failed. That's right. <laughs> Do you question if Shaq should be proud of these? We go to Shaquille O'Neal's Instagram. What are we looking at here? His outfit? Oh, oh no. yes, I've seen his feet before. No. I've seen this. Yes, I've seen no. this in the locker no. room. Yeah. No. Those no. feet a beating no. in the NBA. No. Those feet. I don't think he's proud of it, really. I think no. he's just sort of, uh... <laughs> oh, good no. God. He has painted his toenails, no lie, for 20 years because his feet have looked like that for 20 years. The paint's not helping. Oh, they're not that bad, you know. I got worse. You want oh, to see no, mine? No, please don't. That's right. no. no, they are worse. Yeah, they are worse. worse. No, this is going to be terrible. I don't want <laughs> anyone to see this. I, no, his toes are yellow. And no, this is foul. Old man feet on television are no good. Careful there, Poppy. Oh, no. This is disgusting. All right, here we go. Ah! Ah! Do you question if Olivier should be playing with all their kids? It is Olivier. He is from France. He is 12 and he is 6 foot 10. Let's take a look at him. No. I mean... <laughs> yeah, this is difficult to do here. Uh, he also, uh, oh, yeah, he looks like the owner uh, uh, of the Brooklyn Nets, uh, <laughs> Prokhorov. Are we sure that's not Prokhorov? <laughs> um, he has a certain je ne sais, oh no, I know what it is. He's ginormous. Oh my God. Um, also, I know what it is. Why are they playing on an eight foot rim when they're 12? Maybe six year olds, they're, th and also, why are all the other ones so small? Oh, I was six feet tall when I was 12. I was playing on an eight feet rim and I'm a girl. What's even happening? You were always bigger than the other kids, too. Just not Sarah, that kind of big, yeah, though. thank you. Sarah yeah. likes these jokes a little too much. No, she knows when they're bad. coming before I do. It's very upsetting. <laughs> do you question who has a higher vertical? All right, we go out to the Nashville Zoo, where a five-year-old is embedded in a competition against something from another species. <laughs> Trying to make a so who's got the better vertical here, Poppy? Oh. Who's got the better well, vertical? Well, I mean, it's water lead? aided on the part of the bear. Uh, so. Yeah, but he's better. The bear is better at this. This can't be disputed. <laughs> oh, I could watch this all day. Uh, almost makes me want to have children. Not really. <laughs> it is. It makes you want to have a bear, actually. I, uh, Way more. I don't mean to go totally dark on this, but can you imagine what would happen? No. And how different Dan, this would look if it. that glass weren't there. Dan, sorry. No, don't ruin sorry it. Sorry to ruin it. That video stung. It did nothing for me. What? Oh, you want a better one? You got a oh, better no. one? Oh, this is certainly more fun, yes. Also imagine if the glass hadn't been here, too. Yeah! That's right. Oh, we've got a whole montage of these. Oh, I love this one. All of these, again, would have been very different if not for the glass. <laughs> yeah, that one would have been very that different. That would have been something we yeah, can't show on television. Horrific. Oh, that oh. would have gone very poorly. Oh, it broke! Too. Yeah. Oh my gosh! And then our favorite right here. You know that's what happens here, Sarah? Room. No. Oh, we got the show, Sarah. Oh. That's this, so though. Sarah, what's going? Sarah, there it is. Sarah, look at her. Sarah, there it is. 
Time to play the game that will be a dance house at 6 a.m. tomorrow to watch the World Cup. Everyone is invited. Please bring snacks. See? Oh, no. You tell us what to watch on television tonight. Bring the snacks, though. Bring the snacks. Tomorrow morning on the Tennis Channel, Mercedes Cup Tennis. Oh, you got Federer and Nick Curios, and you know Curios is a bad boy. He's a modern-day mackerel. He quits on matches in the middle. He does things like this when they may or may not be necessary. Oh, how about some of that for you right there? Yeah. More of that, please. Sarah, how about you? Are you intrigued? Yeah, this is a win-win because either Kyrgios does awesome stuff like that and we finally get to see him play up to his potential or Federer absolutely wipes the court with him and we're reminded how much we dislike him. <laughs> Bobby, are you intrigued? Oh, see, see, I'm very intrigued. But listen, you know, a show like that, you got to be careful with it. You know, you cannot swing too hard. Oh, that's true. You got to right. right. be careful right with that. that. You, know, you cannot you swing too hard. Good advice, Poppy. Good parental <laughs> advice. Tonight on Fox Sports Midwest... Cubs and Cardinals. Oh, she likes that. Me, not so much. But let's check in here with some swagger on the base pads. First base here, leading off of first, Harrison Bader. There's a couple days ago here. He's with the Cardinals. And, yeah, <laughs> shimmy it. Shimmy, 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 shimmy. And you're out. Oh, <laughs> a little too confident. Uh, Harrison Bader swinging it, swinging it, swinging it. And, uh, okay, go back to the dugout soon. Filled with shame. And take uh, a seat. Yeah, boom. Yeah. There it is. <laughs> Umpire enjoyed that, too. Sarah, are you intrigued? Well, first of all, I'd advise Mr. Bader to do a better job on the base paths. And secondly, I'd advise everyone to watch Waka versus Lester. This is going to be a great one. All right, a great one. Poppy, are you intrigued? Tree. Oh, see, see, I'm very true, but I tell you what, I tell you who won't be picking him off tonight. Who's that? John Lester. Oh, that's, that's right, him. John Lester. That's right. He, he won't be able to pick right. anybody off. So right. I'll tell you one thing. It's funny to make fun of the guy who's got the short circuit thing in his head. In Thailand, Muay Thai fighting. Just in general? Just in general in Thailand, there's fighting. Oh, what, in the streets? Do I tune in on a channel? No, let's see what we have here. That's going to be a terrible knockout. I don't this like going to be terrible. No! Yeah, there it is. How is that a sport? I mean, I mean, there it is. The rare esophagus kick right in, uh, yeah, uh, barbaric. Oh, good God. And there it is, a fun cushion. Sarah, are you intrigued? What's wrong with all of you? <laughs> Bobby, are you intrigued? Oh, see, see, I'm very intrigued, but I tell you, one guy, he couldn't kick. One guy, he couldn't kick? That's right. Oh, that's right, the Matrix. That's good. good Why memory. is the ref stepping in? That was amazing. Yes. Uh, also amazing, my father's ability to summon fights from a few years ago just with a snap of the fingers like that. Sunday on OWN, Super Soul Sunday. Oh, Oprah Poppy. This is Oprah's channel. She does a good job on Sundays. I like watching everything she does on Sunday. She sat down with Tom Brady the other day. How'd it go? Taking a knee divided the country. What was happening in your own locker room? Oprah and Tom Brady. Fatherhood, Giselle, and his career. Have you thought about what happens after football? Super Soul Sunday. I love that Tom Brady late in life is finally doing some of these things where he puts himself out there and has his own voice. Sarah, are you intrigued? I'll watch anything with that voice. Tom Brady, Oprah, talking about concussions. It sounds so much nicer it is when soothing. you say it like this. It is soothing. Papi, are you intrigued? Oh, see, see, I'm very intrigued. But listen, you know, I don't care the uh, Oprah interviewing Tom Brady. Tom Brady is very dull, you know. He's not going to say anything interesting. You know the person that she should be talking to? Jimmy Garoppolo. That's the oh, guy. Oh, That's I'll... it. That's the really? guy. Really? <laughs> yeah. Jimmy Garoppolo. Guy. Yeah, okay, guys, will Jimmy, you tune no, in to that? Right. Right. No. Super Soul Sunday no. with Jimmy Garoppolo. I mean, I'm tuning in, but I'm, it's going to be on mute. <laughs> That's all the time we have for today. Thank you for watching. Uh, thanks to Sarah for spending the week with us. If you want to check her out, 6 to 9 Eastern, ESPN Radio, Spain and Fitz. Thanks for watching.